Hey everyone, welcome back to Filmbook Review, an official YouTube channel of Filmbook. Featured in Google News, IMDb's news desk, and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Filmbook is an entertainment industry news website that reports on the film and television show industries in the United States and across the world. Today on Filmbook Review, I'll be reviewing the film J. Vida, a movie I screened at the 2023 Tribeca Film Festival. J. Vida is directed by Katya Gorilov. It stars Agafia Namina Seda Harla, Sana Casapalo. This is a J. Vita movie review, and there will be spoilers. If you like our movie reviews, please like this J. Vita film review, as that helps us out with YouTube's algorithm. And please consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box, and you're all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on patreon.com forward slash filmbook. And now, the J. Vita movie review. J. Vita is about an aunt, Lita and her niece, I'm assuming this could be adult, grown-up interpretation, but we're not given any clarification on who her niece is. They've never met before, and they have to drive to Lapland to an empty house they inherited. They need to clear out an old family house in preparation for its sale. Lita is an older woman. She's her aunt, and she's very distrusting, because she had to abandon her past under the pressures of assimilation. Lita and her niece belong to an ethnic group called the Skolts, and the Skolts are an indigenous population that live between Finland, Russia, and Norway. Post-World War II, there was a split. In the Treaty of Tartu in 1920, the Skolt homeland was split into two. The western part was named Petsamo and became part of Finland, and the eastern part became part of the Soviet Union. So the film opens with Lita's face, and you can just see, even in black and white, the ravaged history in her life. You know, her, her weathered, distrusting... I don't want to say fearful face because she's not fearful. She just doesn't want to continue to go through the pain that she's had to endure over the course of her life. And that's very evident very quickly into the film. You know that you're about to enter into a story of profound cultural and personal shock. It really brings the audience quickly into a moment of understanding that you're watching somebody's history unfold in black and white in, in J. Vita. This isn't Saturday afternoon stuff. This is a very serious film, and it's speaking on very serious and historical topics. And the black and white nature of the film from director Katya Gorilov honestly brings out the bright humanity in all of these individuals that we see. We see flashbacks of Ida's past with her with her grandfather and the stories that her grandfather would share with her. Before you have a child, you think about what that child's life will be like and you think about what their child's life will be like and you think about what their child's life will be like because their parents told them that they thought about their life and their grandparents told them about how they were thought of about the future of their life. And there's so many beautiful scenes in J. Vita that it's hard to present the, de the, the most defining, beautiful moment of J. Vita because there's so many beautiful scenes. There's a scene with, the, there's a flashback scene with Ida as a small girl with her grandfather in a boat in the middle of a river somewhere. And that's where her grandfather tells her the story of, of, of having these thoughts that the little girl calls long thoughts because they're thoughts about the past and thoughts about the future, but it really highlights how incredibly sensitive the Skolt culture is, and the, the Samani Skolt indigenous way of life really is sensitive and appreciative of every aspect of life, and it's just inspiring for me to, for anybody to see. And there's another beautiful scene where they're inside of the house, and the house is made of wood, so you can, and it's raining outside, so you can hear the rain hit the wood. And the way the scene is shot is incredibly powerful and while we're in this incredibly powerful beautiful scene you know we see that Lita allows her emotions to finally come out and she cries when she sees a picture of J. Vida and we're not really I'm not too sure still what J. Vida represents or what that small girl who that small girl is is that small girl her is that small girl her niece is that small girl someone else? We don't really know. And that's kind of a part of J. Vita that's very beautiful. And there's a lot of Samani 
and skull culture that is told within this story, but there's also so much wonder left. There's so much magic left for us as an audience to interpret. The most beautiful part of Jayvita is is its sensitivity and its quiet telling of Samani, Skolt, native, indigenous culture. There's no political messaging in Jayvita. There's no, you know, I'm, I'm, too, I'm too used to Western um, corrupt politics at this point because I'm always waiting for the angle, you know, somebody's angle. And there was no angle in Jayvita. It was just a beautiful portrait and a lyrical testament to the bonds of ancestry and the resilience of native people all around the world. And it's a, it was an honor for me to to watch J. Vita. Director Katya Gorilov, I think she did documentaries before. She did maybe one feature film, but J. Vita is a beautiful, beautiful film, and it's an incredibly powerful story. And it's so important for people to be aware of this indigenous culture and these indigenous people that there are only probably less than a thousand of these people alive on Earth, and they deserve our appreciation. We need to learn about them. We need to protect all indigenous people, wherever they are. But first, we have to learn about them. And that's really what Jay Vida and Katya Gorilov give us in this movie. And I'm just so grateful to have been able to watch it. If you have a chance, please check out Jay Vida. As a Samani woman reckons with her past as she clears out everything from her family's home in preparation for its sale. And that brings us to the conclusion of this Jay Vida movie review. I would love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comment section. If you liked what you heard during this review, please like this video and please subscribe to this channel. Please also visit and subscribe to our podcast channel at Filmbook Podcast and our trailer and reaction channel at Filmbook Trailers. Thank you for viewing and you can watch one of these reviews next.